today I want to talk about three books that changed my life. And then I'll also talk about the book that I wrote, The Nature of Transformation. So a little bit about me. I love books. Books are where I turn when I really want to figure something out. When I want a deeper understanding either about myself or some sort of concept, I turn to books. So that is my go-to. I've got so many books. I've got so many bookshelves and, you know, that is just my go-to. So the three books that I'm going to talk to you about today are really books that changed my thinking, gave me a better understanding about the world around me, and really allowed me to understand and settle into some deeper understanding about the world and the way the world works or the way the mind works or the way I work. So buckle in and hopefully you like these books or have thoughts about these books or you go get these books and, you know, you enjoy them too. So the first one going way back is uh, Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. I have this copy, which I had her sign recently, a couple of years ago, but this is the original book. I think this is my original copy that I got. You can see it's kind of old. So A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. It was written a long time ago, um, but it is her version, her interpretation of the Course in Miracles, a Course in Miracles uh, text. It's a spiritual text. I've got a Course in Miracles. I've got that book. It's a very hard book to get through. I haven't been able to get through it. I, I My Gemini mind, or maybe I have some undiagnosed ADD, ADHD. I don't know. I just can't get through it. It's just very hard, but Marianne breaks it down. And one of the key core concepts that she talks about is that there are only two emotions in this world. The thing that you're feeling is based from the foundation of everything that you feel that you're going through has its source in either love or fear. So if you have some great, strong, positive emotions, it sources love. If you have some negative emotion, its source is fear. So that simple concept, that simple thing helps you break down if you have that moment of stillness and silence when you're going through something, can help you understand how your emotions came to be and maybe can help you decode them and come back from this kind of emotional spiral that you might get yourself into. Obviously, if you're in this negative spiral that these fearful thoughts can have. So it's been helpful for me in my coaching practice when I'm coaching other people. It's been helpful for me when I've been in various states of emotional upheaval to kind of evaluate if I'm going through a negative emotion. This is fear. What am I afraid of? What is this fear that I'm feeling and trying to evaluate what is that fear? and breaking it down. What am I afraid of? And just continuing to evaluate that fear. Is it a valid fear? And going through that process helps me work through some of those emotions. That's the first one. Changed my life. Changed my life profoundly. The next one is loving what is. So I was going to a coach and she told me to look up Byron Katie who wrote loving what is, and she's got a lot of videos out there that you can watch her do the concept that she created. It's called The Work. And she does this work called the, the Turnaround. It's pretty amazing to watch her do it. But really, this book centers on the concept that any sort of time when you're feeling these strong emotions, it's not the situation that's causing us pain, right? So we, we get so obsessed with a situation that is going sideways and, and, you know, you're having some sort of conflict and it's this conflict that's causing us pain. And this conflict is, is the source of, you know, whatever's going on. And it, it's, we obsess about this situation and it's not the situation that's causing us pain. It's our thoughts about the situation that's causing us pain. You know, and of course it ties back to the, is it based in love and or fear and kind of goes back to the, the, the fear piece of it. But, you know, I had this situation just last week. It was this difference of opinion at work. This opinion differed from several people and he always thinks that they're right. They think they're right. I think I'm right. I was all up in my opinion of it and I was frustrated and a lot of other things were going wrong. And I was, you know, feeling a lot of anxiety and I was feeling anxiety for a longer period of time than I normally feel it. And I was just feeling it and I slept on it. And then I woke up the next day and I'm like, I, I was tired of pushing. I was tired of focusing on the resistance 
And I came back to thinking about this video that I was going to make, thinking about Byron Katie's teaching and that the situation is not causing me pain. It's my thoughts about the situation that is causing me pain and that I am just going to let go. I'm going to let go of my thinking about the situation and just kind of let down, let go of the resistance that I held on to about this. And I, I felt so much better after that. So it's the thinking about the situation and not the situation that is causing us pain. There, there's that concept in it, but she also does this exercise and she has these four key questions. I'm going to pull it up here that are so key. So she asks you to think about a situation and, you know, it's maybe you're, you're having a disagreement with your spouse and a husband is, is angry with me. And she asks you to ask yourself the question, is it true? And you're like, yeah, of course it's true. You know, but he is angry with me. And then the second question, can you absolutely say that? Yes, it's true. And a lot of people are like, yeah, he's angry with me. But sometimes you're like, you know, or, or did I kind of make that up? So it, you have to watch the videos of her going through it. Sometimes, it, you know, you're not always certain and you make up these stories in your head. So you have to really evaluate, is the thought really true? And so even if you say that, yes, it's true, then she asks you, how do you react? What happens when you believe that thought? What happens? What do you feel? What do you sense? How does your body feel? All those things, when you believe that thought that my husband is angry with me. And then the fourth question is, who would you be without that thought? Just explore. What would you be without that thought? How would you be without that thought? Because again, it's the thoughts that are causing us pain. It's the thought that it's causing us anxiety. It's the thought that it's causing all of our suffering. So it's pretty profound to kind of look at the suffering that we have in this world. Bad things happen and, and cause us grief and anxiety and, and all of the things. But as we move past those moments in time, it's our thinking of those situations that cause us pain, not those actual situations again still. So it's pretty profound. And as you're going through life and you can have those moments of stillness or you can really reflect back on these kind of techniques, is it love or is it fear where my um, feelings are based? Are my thoughts true or not? And what would I be without these thoughts? Who would I be without these thoughts? Really profound stuff to kind of work through some of the things that, that you're going through. So but that's kind of deep stuff in working through some of the, the stuff that's going on in your mind. Then, listen, so there's been so many books written on habits, and I think I have all of them. And I, I, I've heard so many good reviews on all of them. But this is the one that really stuck with me. Better Than Before by Gretchen Rubin. This one is so good because it, it's simple. I, I'm a sucker for all of those kind of personality quizzes and Myers-Briggs and all of those things to find out more about me and my type and how do I work best because I'm just trying to figure out myself better so I can be more effective in my craziness. <laughs> Gretchen uh, does such a good job in breaking down types and personality types and, and how you can be more effective or setting up habits to achieve what you want to achieve. So if you're sitting here going, I want to achieve something, I want to do these things, but why can't I get myself to do it? Why can't I get myself to exercise more? Why can't I get myself to do these things? And one of the key concepts that she writes about is that there are four main types of, she calls them the four tendencies, the upholders, questioners, rebels, and obligers. So these people kind of describe whether they're really able to uh, respond to expectations from outside or inner expectations. So whether they need motivation from outside themselves or within themselves. So most people fall into, let's see, the obligers, where they meet outer expectations, but resist inner expectations. So I think she says in here somewhere, I should have pulled this up, but like 75% of the population are obligers. So meaning that if they are just trying to set up a habit and they only have themselves to rely on, that they're only doing it by themselves, they have a hard time meeting their inner patients. But if they set up a partner to meet to go exercise with, they are more likely to meet those outer expectations because they, they've set up somebody to be accountable to. That's why coaching works so well. That's why having accountability partner works so well because you are setting outer expectations. And then she has a lot of other kind of different categories of, of types that you can kind of compare yourself against. So if you're trying to set up a meditation practice and you want to do it first thing in the morning, but really you're um, somebody who does best, uh, does things better at night, 
and you're trying to do this in the morning and you keep on failing, you know, you're, you're probably not doing the things at the right time of the day. So, you know, all of these different kind of indicators of when you do things best to figure out how you can implement these things in your life to be more effective. So again, Gretchen Rubin, better than before. If you want to implement habits, figure out your type. It's crazy. I listened to this on audiobook. I, then I needed to um, get it in hard copy and highlight it. And then I think I gave away at least two copies and then I needed to buy it. I think this is my fourth copy that I've, that I've bought. So it's, it's a really great book and it's something that I really recommend to anybody trying to set up habits uh, better than before by Gretchen Rubin. It's one of my favorites. So those are my three uh, books that really kind of foundationally for me really uh, made big impacts in my life. So there is the book that I wrote. The Nature of Transformation. So I wrote this book because I think that a lot of people resist hiring a coach for whatever reason. I think that a lot of women think that they don't need a coach or maybe they think it's a luxury or they shouldn't be spending money on a coach. Or I think that a lot of women are just used to doing it themselves, you know, you know, bootstrapping it and they think that they should uh, figure things out themselves. They shouldn't invest in themselves. All of those things. I think that there are a lot of reasons that women don't hire a coach. And I think that I think it's just a shame that women don't invest in themselves, themselves because I think it's so important. But what I wanted to do with this book is make coaching techniques more readily available to women. And But I also, I'm so inspired by nature because nature transforms. It transforms through the seasons. It transforms through self-preservation. You know, all of the different things that happen out in nature. It transforms naturally. It doesn't think about what it needs to do. It just transforms. And we need to transform in a way that doesn't resist transformation. When we resist transformation, that's where the pain comes. So we need to settle into our own transformation. And transformation isn't about changing who you are. It's becoming more of who you are and who you were meant to be before life's experiences created fear and doubt within you. So it's becoming more of who you are and who you were meant to be. I wrote this book so people had kind of an opportunity to have this at their fingertips and it's meant to be used forever. You can work through the book and all at once, but you can go back to it. If you're struggling with in a certain area, you can go back to it, find the area that you're struggling with and kind of work through some of the journaling questions. But I wrote it in a way that it kind of follows the seasons. I start with spring where it's kind of about new beginnings and making sure that things are fertile. We're eliminating limiting beliefs and things that no longer serve us. And you know, we're making sure that we have a strong foundation. So we're making sure that we're taking good care of our body and we're healthy and we're setting a good foundation as we're moving along this journey of healing and becoming our best selves. And then in summer, it's vibrant and we're stepping into our power and we're, you know, making sure that we are feeding ourselves good, strong information in our mind and we're setting these powerful beliefs that we are retraining our brains to have these positive thoughts about ourselves. And then in fall, we are feeling gratitude and we're stepping into and connecting to our spirit and who we are meant to be. And we're connecting to that deeper part of us that is longing to, you know, shine and feel more at peace with ourselves. And then in winter, like we're reflecting on the journey. And then we're also looking at like, okay, we've got this foundation and we're feeling good. What do we want to achieve in the future? Where do we want to go? And what do we want to achieve? What do we want our lives to look like? What will be fulfilling and joyful for us to do in the future? So I provide guided meditations, breath work, and recommendations for essential oils. So you can have these meditations to solidify the learnings and really ground yourself in each of the sections of the book. I provide inspirations through a walk through nature. So my experience is in nature and I want you to be able to connect with nature in a deeper way because nature is so healing and to be able to connect with it will help you in your journey. And then I also provide um, time with a coach where I provide journal prompts and different questions that I would ask as a coach to a client in person. So you can kind of work through some of the issues so we can, you know, get to the root of what might be keeping you stuck and develop solutions going forward. So you can create a plan for what you want to achieve and how you are going to get there. So those are the books that I recommend, the three books that I've read and my book as well. So um, hopefully you read these books. Um, 
You know, I think that books are a great way to continually uh, fuel our minds with powerful information that really put us on that path of continuous learning, continuous growth. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you or I'm always available for a free consultation and I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what your favorite book is. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.